Jimmy Fail is off, but it's me, Rich Zioli from Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. Great to be with you. Having a lot of fun. Great to have producer Christine here. Josh has helped, too. Can't do it without him. And great to welcome to the program Congresswoman Debbie Lesko. She represents Arizona's 8th Congressional District. She's on the House Committee on Energy and a committee member. Uh, how, I'm sorry, a committee member of the House Committee on Energy and Commerce. Uh, Congresswoman Debbie Lesko on Twitter at Rep D Lesko. Thanks for joining me here on Fox Across America. Thanks for having me, Rich. Absolutely. It's great to be on. It's great to have you on. So let's start with the fact that uh, your former colleague, I guess I would say now, George Santos, was expelled from the House. How did you vote on this and what are your thoughts? Well, I voted no. And, you know, this is a very rare in history. There is five former people that have been expelled from Congress prior to Santos, and three of them were during the Civil War and or after the Civil War, and the other two were convicted of crimes. And so I voted no because George Santos had not been convicted of a crime in a court of law. And if he had been, I would have voted yes. But since he hadn't been, I voted no. Okay, that's that's fair. I I actually I I respect your reasoning on that. And I think that that's pretty similar to what Tom Massey said uh, earlier today. But the vote was there, and I guess I'm sure the Democrats were all more than happy to kick him out, right? Yeah, there was two Democrats that voted no. So there were a total of 311 yeses, 114 noes. So 112 of uh, were noes were Republicans, and two were Democrats that voted no. And then there were a couple uh, that voted present, like they didn't want to vote yes or no. They just voted that they were present and <laughs> didn't want to record which way they voted. Interesting. Interesting. All right, let's talk about electric vehicles. You've been pretty outspoken on this, and uh, these dealerships, these dealers are turning around saying, look, people don't want these things. They're not buying them, and the only way that they even move is if the government gives massive rebates and subsidies. They're just not something that people want, and yet, you know, like Congresswoman, in my state of New Jersey, the governor of New Jersey, Phil Murphy, has said by 2035, all vehicles have to be electric. The only way this transition happens is not the free market. It's if the government mandates it by basically making gas-powered cars illegal, like what Gavin Newsom wants to do in California. Well, yeah, and what your state wants to do. And it's just ridiculous because it's not following what the constituents and the people want, which is obvious from when I, you know, I had car dealers from not only Arizona, but throughout the entire nation that have come into my office and told me, listen, at first there was a waiting list to get an electric vehicle. But now people, once they uh, started using them and decided that, okay, I have, I, I have words that I can't charge my vehicle if I'm going on long trips and things like that. They're sitting on their lots and they can't get rid of them. And, you know, Republicans like myself knew this was going to happen because you can't have a government program that mandates things that don't make sense. And it doesn't make sense to mandate, as the Biden administration Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, has this proposed rule on vehicle emissions, which would effectively mandate that 67 percent of all cars and light trucks and 25 percent of all heavy duty trucks manufactured by 2032 have to be all electric. That's only nine years from now. And it's it's a crazy thing. They're pushing it on the people. They're giving tons, tons of taxpayer dollars in subsidies uh, towards that. In fact, there was a recent study that it is costing us taxpayers $50,000 per electric vehicle sold in taxpayer subsidies and regulatory credits uh, per car over a 10-year period. It's just insane. Fifty thousand dollars per car yep. is that what you just said yep. i heard that correctly fifty thousand dollars per car and that was from the texas public policy foundation did a study on that and they added up all of the taxpayer costs for every single electric vehicle sold fifty thousand dollars a car in taxpayer money is being spent 
That is insane. But I'm telling you, I work uh, with the Democrats on the Hill and the vast majority of them. This is like a religion to them. It, it doesn't matter if it makes sense or not. So they want to put all vehicles, be all electric. They want to force it on the American people, which, of course, China is has the advantage on the supply chain. Uh, so most of the critical minerals, like lithium for the batteries, are refined in China, not in the United States. And also, they're, the Biden administration wants to shut down natural gas energy power plants here in the United States, which gives baseload energy to the electric grid, because we're going to have more demand on the electric grid. But at the same time of putting all of those electric vehicles on the grid, they want to shut down uh, natural gas energy plants that produce the electricity on the grid. And then they also want to shut down mines like they are in Arizona. They shut down a mine that Trump had okayed. It was a copper mine, and they shut it down. And it's just sitting there. $2.3 $2.3 billion was invested in that mine. It could have produced 25% of all the copper that's needed in the United States, and Biden shut it down. Well, instead, now we're going to have kids doing it in third world countries, right? Exactly. Kids or slaves. You know, it, it, it's just insane. And China is buying up these mines. They're smart. You know, I, I have to give it to them. They have a long-term plan. They can because, you know, they have communism. And, and in the meantime, we have all these regulations and liberal policies. And it's just hurting America and it's helping China. Yeah, no, no question about it. Let's talk about uh, the border, too. I mean, there, you have a fellow lawmaker in Arizona calling for the National Guard to go down there to handle the migrant surge. Uh, what's your sense of what's being debated right now in Capitol Hill, Congresswoman Debbie Lesko, with regards to the border? And do you think it's going to have any teeth in it or is this just going to be a way to uh, satisfy Republicans who really just don't want to do any more Ukraine funding? And this is the excuse they'll be able to use to get it past the finish line. Well, we really do need to secure the border, and uh, the Biden administration just wants everybody and anybody in. You know, in fact, there's uh, two Democrats that sponsored a bill recently that would legalize uh, immigration to the United States if the country that they're coming from has climate change. Well, of course, you know, according to them, the whole world is, you know, is in an existential threat because of climate change. So that means every person in the entire world should legally immigrate, be able to legally immigrate to the United States. Um, I, I, here in the House that the Republicans control, uh, we passed a bill, H.R. 2, back in May of this year that would uh, really uh, help secure the border. It reinstalls many of the Trump-era policies, like the Remain in Mexico policy, so people would have to wait in Mexico or a third country while their asylum claim is processed through our courts. They couldn't just get a free pass into the United States. Um, we passed that. And now Speaker Johnson is really adamant about making sure we get that bill or portions of that bill in any deal for Ukraine funding, possibly Israel funding. You know, he's trying to use whatever leverage we have, because as you know, Republicans only have majority in the House. In the, they have Democrat majority in the Senate and a Democrat president. So we have to use whatever leverage we can get to secure the border because it's a national security risk. And then the other question I have for you is, how come you're not running for re-election? You, a lot of people were surprised to hear that. Well, you know, I was surprised myself. I surprised myself a little bit, but um, I was going to run again. And then I was going to call it quits after the next time, because I'm not one of these people that want to stick here till I die. You know, I, I just I don't find it that attractive. Right. Um, but. But the more I came here, you know, more often that it became more often that I questioned why I was doing it, because it's really a sacrifice. People don't realize 
that we're away from our families so much. We're here in session working in Washington, D.C. about three weeks out of every month. Um, I have to travel. It's a five-hour flight back and forth, so I miss my husband, I'm, you know, and I miss my 94-year-old mother and my kids and my grandkids, and I'm just missing out on a lot of family life. And for me, it was the time to go back and spend time with my family in Arizona. And who knows what I, you know, whether I run for another elected office in Arizona or what I'm going to do. Uh, I, I'm not sure yet, but it was time for me because I just felt like the benefits, like what I could get accomplished, uh, was not enough to justify me being away from my family. Understood. Well said. Well said. Well, listen, we appreciate all the great work you've done. We appreciate you still speaking out on these issues. Last question for you before I let you go, though, Congresswoman Debbie Lesko. Uh, where do you think the Hunter Biden testimony winds up next week? Are, are you optimistic that we're going to get some answers out of him? Uh, and also Fauci, too. Are, are you are you hopeful that we'll get some answers from Dr. Anthony Fauci about gain of function research and uh, the earliest days of covid and things like that? Well, I hope we do. Um, you know, these people, especially Fauci, are very slippery. You know, they know they've been coached on how to answer things. But I, I tell you what, I think we're getting closer and closer to a House vote on an impeachment inquiry because the more and more information that we are getting here in the U.S. House of Representatives implicates President Biden in like a bribery scheme, um, you know, where his family was getting all kinds of money from China, uh, Romania, um, Ukraine, from foreign countries because of the Biden name. And it's like looking, to me, it's looking bad for them. But what's happened now is the White House has sent, um, you know, the Comer and uh, Jordan and uh, the other chairman of Ways and Means, Jason Smith, a letter saying, well, you haven't had a full House vote on impeachment inquiry, so we're not going to listen to your subpoenas. So now the whole House, I hope that we get the votes to vote for impeachment inquiry and vote it out of the House because then we'll have more legal standing to get more answers because we need to connect more dots and make sure that we connect President Biden uh, more explicitly to this money that Hunter Biden and uh, other members of his family were bringing in because of the Biden name. Yeah. Very, very good. All right. Well, listen, Congresswoman, we appreciate your time today. Congresswoman Debbie Lesko, best of luck in retirement in your last uh, your last time. I guess you're not running for re-election, so we got you for some time, right? Yep. I'm going to be here a year, and I'm going to be fighting like heck for the values that we believe in. Good. Well, follow her on Twitter, at Rep D Lesko. Thank you again. And this is Fox Across America. We'll be right back. A show so good.